Ho, 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 and jolly holidays, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Talking with Andrew and Chris. I am Andrew. <laughs> and, and I am your season's greeting, Chris. Welcome, guys. Thank you for joining us. Happy holidays. We hope you guys had a great Thanksgiving. We hope that Christmas in just a few days is amazing Wait, for you what? all. what? What's happening? <laughs> I'm just Was I, See, today, was I, I asleep I... for too long? <laughs> yeah, dude. You fr- this, is, this is why I tell you to set an alarm even if dude, it's just for a cat Look, nap. I knew I was late to recording today, but I didn't think I was like two months late. <laughs> Yeah, look, man, a lot has changed in the past few... Actually, we can't go down that rabbit hole. We're still not there yet. Uh, Anyways, um, with that being said, guys, the reason for this kind of all over the place intro is because, well, this isn't your normal episode of Talking with Andrew and Chris. Again, Talking spelled T-A-L-K-I-N apostrophe. I was going to say the background looks a little different. It does, yeah, yeah. It's a little neon-y. Unfortunately, our logo isn't there, but it will be soon enough. But there is another logo there, a show that I've kind of spoken about quite a bit because it's, well, my other show. Uh, Talking TV, that is. And so today we are introducing a new segment, a new monthly, not series, but show. A monthly exclusive, if you will, where Andrew and I can sort of fuse the both channels together and, and just share our mutual love for something that we uh, we kind of, di- we didn't meet over it. We met through our good friend Tyler, Tyler Wilson of 7715 Shout on out. Sony RCA Records. Um, <laughs> yeah, no biggie or anything. How much of a hack do I sound like today? I love it. But, uh, but, but there's something that I think forged the friendship of ours, and I think it, it's really what we're going to be talking about here today, which is uh, video games. And guys, welcome to the second episode, but the first official episode of the Talking Network presenting No NPCs Allowed. Ooh, Andrew, how you doing, man? Wow. I feel like this is such a missed opportunity to have like an epic theme video song thing play right here just like something like that did you not see the uh the intro video at the beginning of this i was asleep i mean you i was asleep remember edited it oh okay you must have slipped you must have edited it in your sleep no i edited it back in october and now it's december like you said and now i just can't remember any of that stuff dude Right, the snow has fallen, the leaves are fully ripped from the trees, yep, and all yep. hope is... Anyways, so <laughs> what is going on, guys? Welcome, What's up, guys? welcome, welcome. Uh, to answer your it, question, it Chris, as... I'm, I'm doing pretty good. Um, I uh, I was I feel very confused because this intro is really throwing me, <laughs> throwing me off, but I'll, I'll, uh, I'll get my groove in a second, I'm sure, but I'm okay. Yeah, for sure, man. Take, take your... Look, take your time with it, breathe. Yeah. It's all gonna be okay. I'm so, I'm so all nervous. I wanna do is it's a new a, show. I can tell. <laughs> I really can tell. Listen, there's nothing really different about this show except for the first time in a long time it has a focus. So it might bode in our favor, actually. <sighs> Focusing is pretty tough for me, but I'll give it a shot. <laughs> that you know, you, you you are the ultimate sparring partner because every time I think I have you beat, you just come back and, and just parry exactly the move I was thinking of doing. And I think that explains the uh, explosiveness of our dynamic, and uh, that's why I'm excited to do this show with you. So, Andrew, you just got back from a little trip, and you don't have to divulge it to the listeners. I kind of want to make the push to be more personal in our in our broadcasting in our relationship with them but uh, i mean you had way more i had a great time on halloween you know if you guys have seen or not seen we hosted on talking tv a watch along of halloween 1978 on halloween all the hosts were in costume we had a costume contest party giveaway giving away a slasher t-shirt from our good friend david of flix talks i was this close to winning t-shirt line i was that close yeah We actually had a decent amount of entries, and thank you guys so much for that. Again, if you want to catch any recaps, any replays of our month-long Halloween celebration, we talked about all things from classic films like Swamp Thing and The Thing, uh, 1982, another John Carpenter flick, to we covered Bly Manor and The Babysitter, to name a few. So uh, that's all over on the Talking TV channel. So I spent a lot of time in front of a computer (laughs) this uh, this Halloween season, but you actually got out there into the world. And and if you don't want to to share it, that's fine. I went to what some would call Halloween Town. You, that is very true. 
Yeah, I. Uh, How was that? I went to Salem, Massachusetts, which um, sounds dangerous because traveling right now is a little sketchy. But I had this trip planned for a while, and I was just there in September. And um, I don't mean to toot my own horn or anything, but I feel like I'm pretty smart when it comes to like not being an idiot and being like putting people in danger or myself in danger when it comes to getting sick or whatever. But uh, I went to go see my my girlfriend in Salem and uh, mm-hmm. humble brag, <laughs> humble brag. Uh, it was pretty cool. <laughs> Had a good time. We were um, Kim Possible and Ron Stoppable, which is pretty funny. Oh, nice, man. Yeah, thanks, thanks. That's pretty cool. Thanks. Um, that's a good uh, That's a good. Now, what's interesting idea. is the last time I was there in September, uh, like, obviously, they were already, like, Halloween ready, like, which shops are probably open all year round. I've This is my first time actually going in September. Um, and while I was there, there was some guy dressed as a... Have you seen... Have you seen the vine where this dumb guy's wearing, like, a scary nun mask and then a finger goes down his throat and he laughs? No, I've okay, well, thankfully never I'm seen I'm sure that. that at least most of our listeners slash viewers have seen that cause it's a pretty iconic vine. Uh, some guy was wearing that mask and like dressed up as a whole nun, but was also on stilts and was just kind of like slowly walking say. through the town, like just like with his hands together like that, just like looking around and waving at people and like literally doing nothing except walking slowly. So uh, I was... Seeing that in September, I was like, I'm kind of nervous for October, even though they canceled, like, almost everything because of COVID and everything. But, uh, you know, yeah, pretty wild. But all in all, I had a good time. You know, small, small uh, gathering, some costumes, some, some funny games. I had a good time. And Salem is always spooky looking. So if you like spooky stuff and... You have patience to wait until things are a little uh, less chaotic. Then I would say go to Salem, maybe next Halloween, and have a good time. Yeah, and you know what I really respect the most, Andrew, is that I was like, dude, like it, it'll be fine. Like you, you guys were safe. You wore your mask and all that. And you're like, no, nah, no, nah, we can't hang until I have quarantine for 14 days. So we would have been doing this live in the new studio, but uh, Andrew is respectful of other people. Yeah, not just himself. I would. So. I would feel. Thank I would you. probably feel worse than I've ever felt in my life if I was the reason that I got your that your dog got sick. You know, dude, I that that is very true. Would that be, would I think, that would end our for, friendship. Yeah, it, unfortunately, it would. I mean, look, pups are pups are family, right? Yeah, no, listen, uh, well, I wouldn't Andrew, hold it uh, against you. What was it like taking a long car rider? train ride or whatever for the first time in a while that must be cool okay well or does it still suck okay so this time thankfully my great friend great friend of ours friend of the shows steve squid montana he's a good good buddy of ours he was nice enough to drive me to salem this time because he was just gonna go visit for the day with his friend anyway so that was cool that that was like half the time it took me last time last time in september I took a train from my house to New York City, which is the opposite direction of where I was trying to get. Um, but I had to do that. Took a train to New York City to take a bus to Boston to take a train to Salem. And then that day I left my house at 7 a.m. and got to Salem at 3.30 p.m. So that was terrible because a three and a half hour distance wise trip took like 10 hours to get there. Uh, or almost 10, whatever it was. Way more than three, mm-hmm. which is how long it really should yeah, way take. way more than it should have taken, right? And, you know, everybody's... And you have to wear a mask, like, literally the entire time. I had to wear a mask all day because I was just, you know, in a train station or a bus station or on a bus or on a train. And, A, you're not supposed to take yours off when you're on those places anyway. But either way, I, I'm one of those people where, like, when I'm talking to people, I'm like, hey, I'm not worried about it, you know, like, I'm like, I know that it's real and, like, you have to be careful, but, like, I'm not scared, I'm not worried that I'm gonna get it, but then, like, when I'm in the moment, and especially when I'm by myself and I think about, like, oh, man, it's so uncomfortable, I want to take this mask off real quick, but then I'm like, but that's gonna be the time that something bad happens, so I'm not taking it off, and it's so weird to smell your own breath all day, because it really changes <laughs> more than you'd think it does. And that's so something that's I learned. Your big takeaway. My big really takeaway is journey. that your mouth is a lot more, uh, is a lot less, uh, you know, stagnant than you think it is. 
Okay. The, the more you know. And uh, I do want to note that Train to Salem is, in fact, my favorite Grateful Dead song. Um, <laughs> <laughs> There's no way that's a real Grateful Dead song. I mean, they have, I think, over like a thousand songs, so it's a higher probability than most artists. And I think a thousand is lowballing it, to be honest. It just sounds like it could be a train, uh, a Grateful Dead song. But with that being said, we're not here to uh, talk about Andrew's personal life all day as much as he really took that three minutes I wanted to give him and ran with it. Um, we're here to talk about video games and Andrew. I kind of want to let you take this one and uh, sort of let us know your experience with all things horror and thriller and spooky in the video game world. You know, how, how much of that type of stuff do you consume? Um, I think overall, probably less than most other kinds of games. But um, as you were kind enough to remind me when we were talking about maybe doing this as a topic for a show, um, I've played more what would be considered scary games than I thought I did. Like, originally I was just thinking, like, well, I never really got into Resident Evil or stuff like that, or, like, the... Was that Outlast or anything like that? Like, I'm not into just the walking around really slowly uh, waiting for something scary to happen. Like, that's also oh, why... Really? That's also why I don't play Valorant, because that's literally my least favorite part of shooting games, is, like, when you know there's only, like, one enemy left, and it's just you and them, and you don't know where they are, and they don't know where you are, and you're just, like, walking around trying to hope that you see them first like i don't like that stuff so <clears throat> i wasn't into that but i don't really remember the first scary game i ever played although i think the first one i saw was again squid our buddy was playing dead space in the dark at his house while i was there and that was definitely scary to even just to watch so oh yeah dead space is uh and it was so cool and that was like it's one a good of, game that was i it's feel like classic at this i point. feel like that was one of the first ones that had like cool good space graphics you know like good gravity so stuff the aliens gonna, were scary stuff like that i was gonna bring up dead space because i think what it did so well was it took the it's not an rpg it's pretty linear but it, it took the play style of like a mass effect and the mm -hmm. graphic the graphic like prowess of a mass effect which horror games for a long time if you guys don't know kind of followed the uh the ideology of horror movies wherein they were very low budget they were indie studios and they weren't ever really triple a stylized and in video games triple a is like blockbuster so they didn't have the resources the assets if you will to sort of produce like a more polished looking game of more polished playing experience and dead space having major funding behind it actually had that so I think it kind of opened up the floodgates for kind of like, not Alien and Aliens, the second one, which was more shooting and stuff, uh, if you remember, mm -hmm. where um, James Cameron was kind of like, cool, we're going to give the people like a lot more guns now, and we're going to just have them just spray Alien right. blood all like, over the place. Like more so, like, action, gave you that less type suspense. Of like, yeah, exactly. Like Doom, just without demonic presence. Right, yeah. Like I wouldn't like, say you know, Doom is like a scary things. game because you never really feel powerless in that game. Like you're always like, I'm a badass and I'm running through killing demons. But like in Dead Space, you're like, that the power's is... out. I don't know what's going on. I have probably limited ammo. I'm picking up guns as I find them. Like that's the kind of stuff, which is also, um, I'll talk more about it in a minute but like that's how last of us is too which is part of what makes last of us scary is like yeah it's got zombies and stuff but like you're also like i literally have three bullets total like not three bullets in this clip i have three bullets total and i know there's like eight zombies around so like that's scary in itself but also um what i'm remembering that i literally just had on the tip of my tongue when you were talking about dead space well did you know that dead space 3 came out this year I didn't know that. Yeah, I knew that it, they were it, making it, but I thought something else happened. It, it came out, and it's like a huge flop. <laughs> no one's talking about it. Mm. Apparently, it, it like plays horribly, and that just makes me upset, man. I, I didn't even watch uh, Co play it, you know? It's like sometimes I won't buy a game, and mm -hmm. I'll just watch a streamer play it. Co Carnage is my dude. Shout out Co. I don't actually know him, but I, I feel like I do know him, actually, by <laughs> how open and honest he is on his streams and how right. much of himself he gives to his listeners. Anyways. I just remembered, though. Hold on. Speaking about Dead Space... Even before so I was just filling it, anyways. <laughs> even <laughs> shout out Greg. Um, even before Dead Space, actually, I just remembered. I think my first taste of like horror game is the Flood level oh, yeah, from sure. Halo. 
I think it was probably okay. Halo 3, right? When you go in the, like, the library know it was or whatever. Gonna, yeah, it, the, of course. At level 8 of Halo 2. I had no idea that this conversation would take us there, but <laughs> let's talk about it. Yeah, the now, flood the flood were creepy because like I wasn't the biggest Halo fan as a kid. Like the only one I ever actually owned before owning the Master Chief collection now as a grown up um was Halo 3 and I played through the campaign a lot with that one like me and again Squid and his younger brother <laughs> him and his, Squid and his younger brother took me through that entire legendary Halo 3 campaign and showed me where all the skulls were and it was so sick and so fun mm-hmm. and I remember getting to that level and right when it starts the, the vidmaster challenge yeah one of well I never did that because that was way above my skill level but I got all the skulls and that was enough for me because I wanted the ninja armor um, okay. but at the beginning of that level and the, the one flood jumps above you and you have to shoot him to get the skull. Like first I was like, what the hell did you even just shoot? Cause like the body comes down and it's like this weird, like grotesque thing that like limps and has like a claw on one arm and then like a shriveled up hand on the other arm. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then you get further and further in and you see like the weird, like thing, like it almost looks like half-life with like the shit taking over the, the Marines. And you're like, what the hell is going on? And then you see the little things chasing you and you're like, I don't know if I should shoot these things. Cause I feel like I'm not going to be finding a lot of ammo because this is a zombie level and there's never ammo in zombie games so like i'm nervous and that was definitely the first time that a game like made me like anxious to survive (laughs) gotcha yeah you know with me and halo it's it's really funny and then i do want to dive into uh horror Mm -hmm. more horror based games but uh you know i bought halo 2 before i got halo 1 because it was probably like 12 around that time 11 and i think i i thought i was ordering a different game this is like the early <laughs> days of amazon i've been there dude. and uh so I, this it it came and i opened it up and i was so upset i don't even remember what game i wanted to get but my dad was like i mean just just try it <laughs> and so i i put it in and i remember i playing have it never heard this story and it's so funny because i know how you are with halo and that's a hilarious yeah, intro yeah, yeah, to it was halo. an accident and and then my i just remember like sitting there and burning a whole day dude my <coughs> mind was absolutely blown it it like halo to me before there was music there was halo right like that was the first thing i, I ever truly loved if you want to oh really God. go there you know maybe naruto <sighs> maybe naruto was like six months before it but uh That's so, so like and i just remember sitting there and having my mind blown and being actually scared but not being able to stop playing the uh the flood level so what i would do is i would restart and 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 get up to that level on all the hard difficulties like working my way up and then i was like all right i actually have to go in there because i was like so terrified of it dude it was a crazy level and it was so hard to beat they did did a really good job with that stuff circles and circles in that room i hated it dude it's because all the flood like all the flood like crap that gets on the walls and everything it makes every room look the same yeah (laughs) dude halo is absolutely just a phenomenal game but uh andrew you know speaking of phenomenal games walking simulators and horror are kind of like one of my favorite things to play because i don't play many single player games anymore it's it's really just all about like you know hanging out with the homies that are scattered across the country right. keeping like up with playing them monopoly and stuff and like playing monopoly hardcore lately which is what we've been doing just like online games you know overwatch halloween events pretty tight as per usual but it's kind of losing its allure just a little bit but that's well, okay it's, it's um, over now unfortunately but i know what you yeah, mean it's we're like waiting for, it, well it's like it comes and then you play and you're like wow this was really fun and then like you play for a week and you're like but it's literally the same exact thing as last year and they've never changed it ever except for these challenge missions so you're like now i'm kind of over it but the halloween maps always look amazing right we're waiting for um my group at least when i say we we're waiting for the second overwatch to kind of like re-spark our um our love for the game because it is a good game but it's like right. okay guys Come on now. Lots of rumors that it's, the, it's, the beta for Overwatch 2 will be in uh, April or May. Yeah, whatever those rumors are, I won't believe them until I see them. Because, like, let's just use Cyberpunk as an example, getting pushed back a fourth time. And I'm actually really excited about that <sighs> game. I want to do a podcast on it when it comes out. But, I mean, it's just like at this point, dude, come on. Like, just, listen. it's okay. We're not going to be <laughs> mad. Just actually tell us when you think it'll be done. Yeah, listen, I've been there, all right? When you know how much I love Kingdom Hearts, I mean, I have... Kingdom Hearts <laughs> yeah, tattoo right sure. here. And Kingdom Hearts 2 was pushed back so many times that it got pushed back over a year. Like, 
It was like a week before it was supposed to come out the first time. Oh, it's getting pushed back a few months. All right, whatever. It's getting pushed back a few months. Okay. It's getting pushed back a couple weeks. Okay. It's getting pushed back a few months. Okay. Okay. You've now pushed it back over a year. Just tell us you're working on it and then just let us know when it's done. I don't care anymore. Just tell me when yeah. it's done. So I've been 100, there. 125%. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's ridiculous, man. It's just like, come on, guys. Like, you can't make something look this cool. Tell us Keanu Reeves is in it and then keep delaying it. Like, that's yeah, not okay. Yeah. It's a quarantine. People need things to look forward to. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And like, it's you like, can't be doing that. And then also on that quarantine side, it's like, we get that you can't finish it as soon as you wanted to. Like, we understand. We're not going to be like, then forget your stupid game. Like... <laughs> Just, right. just don't string us along. So, you know, as I became um, an older gentleman, I uh, started to get a little money in my pocket. And mm. uh, so I was mm. like, you know what? I think it's time I buy a gaming PC. And I heard a lot of good things about this Steam service. And they throw a lot of games on sale all the time. And guess what? I listen to albums sometimes just because the artwork looks cool. Talking to you, the Devil Wears Prada with that new record. It's Halloween (laughs) season and I checked it out and I actually wanted Screaming for the first time since like 2012 and I didn't get it. Was a little upset. The first couple songs are are pretty kind of heavy, but... Just not what I want. I wanted. I just wanted to know that they hadn't changed. Is what I'm trying to say. I see. And they did very, mm. very badly change in a way that I'm like, we already have Bring Me the Horizon. We don't need a fourth. Right. Mini We've got Bring Me the Horizon. We've got uh, what is it? I the Mighty or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Who? We, who? Guess what? That is their lane. They're not switching to a new lane. You yeah. know. At least turn your blinkers on first and give us some <laughs> warning. Jesus. <laughs> But uh, that, that's a different conversation. Yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this gaming PC, and I've been hearing a lot about this game, Firewatch, because it was sort of like one of those weird mm. little indie games that I've always heard about that I never had a chance to really right. play because I was just like a console kid. Mm-hmm. Shout out my console kids. Uh, I remember you uh, you uh, you showed me this game once, and we named that Beagle Bucket. Yeah, dude, the Beagle Name Bucket. You got it. If you guys don't go the Beagle Name Bucket route, shout yeah. out all my Bucket Beagle guys out there mm, yeah. and gals. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and I just like fell in love. I was like, whoa, this is like, this is like playing a movie. Mm-hmm. There's not much gameplay mechanics, but what there is is fully immersive sound design, scoring, storyline. Like choose your own path. Like your your decisions dictate mm-hmm. the story. And I like that in these kinds of games, like you can kind of decide the pacing too. You can a hundred percent. You can. You are the storyteller and receiving the story at the same time. It's it's really cool. And like the indie world game design has just increased so much because of like how Unreal Engine and all that stuff has just come forward. I'm a nerd. I read a lot of tech blogs. We don't need to get into that. But Chris it is, is insane how good this stuff looks, man. And so. I, I like mm-hmm. was like, whoa, this is cool. And it has this really creepy twist at the end. It, it, you you find out it's not as much of a horror game as they lead you on to believe the whole time. It's actually explained as... Uh, uh, you know what? I don't want to spoil it for people out there. It is a flirtatious way to get into walking simulators and horror games. Listen, if you want to talk say. about a, a walking simulator that looks and sounds and breathes like a horror game... But then all the way at the end, you find out it was never a horror game and you're just a bitch for being scared that whole time. Then let's talk about Gone Home because I'm still not over it. Okay, so like Steam, uh, PlayStation Plus, if you're a member, they give you two free games a month. Like usually it's like one of them is like a really good game that came out like two years ago or something. And then the other game is like some arcade game or an indie game or something like that. So one month it's free game Gone Home. There it is. And the premise of this game is, I don't remember any of the characters' names. You're a girl, you come home from your trip to Europe or whatever, you're probably in college or something, and you come home, you know, gone home, you've gone home, and uh, there's a note from your parents or something that says, like, we went out, um, I don't remember if they're like, we went out to look for your sister, or we went out to eat, or I don't know, but you're the only one home. And you don't know where your parents are. Maybe you do. I don't remember. You don't know where your sister is. You keep walking around the house and you find notes and clues and stuff that's like, oh, like, since I've been gone, like, life has been weird at home and my parents have been fighting with my sister and all this other stuff. And the entire time you're playing this game, it happens in one night, the whole night, rain, it's raining, it's thunderstorming, it's dark, 
You know, like you're walking through your house quietly by yourself. There's no dialogue. You're by yourself and it's just raining. Then you find like a secret passageway in your house and you find all these notes and you find like your sister was like talking to this girl that like was trying to join the, the army and shit. And you're trying to, and I'm like this whole game. I'm like, dude, my sister got freaking killed by some dude who's been secretly living in my house and I'm trying to find him. I have no idea where he is. I'm so nervous the entire time I'm playing this game. Like I'm like waiting for someone to jump out at me, waiting to find some dead body or something. And then you get to the end of the game, spoiler alert, you get to the end of the game, you get up in the attic and you find out that your sister just fell in love with some girl and they ran away to Seattle. And I'm like, hold on, hold on. This entire game in a stormy night, you're home alone, you find a secret passageway in your house, and this wasn't yeah. even a horror game, and all it is is your sister was like, our parents don't understand, I'm in love with this girl, we're running away to Georgia. And I'm like, are you, you know kidding really me? love about these types of games is the way that they deliver the story beats. Like in Firewatch, you have the woman calling you on the intercom the whole time, the other fire tower, because basically right. you're up there in Colorado, and in the 80s, they... Uh, had fire towers still. It was like the end of the fire tower era and there would be fires and they would spot them and try and save the forest from burning down and burning down towns and stuff. So you never meet her in person because she's miles and miles away. Like right. you look through this binocular to see her. Right. Yeah, I remember the beginning but of the But they deliver... <clears throat> yeah, exactly. They deliver the story beats through like a little radio and in Gone Home you get like these notes that you can read and I believe there's mm -hmm. voiceovers too as you're like walking I but think, you're always yeah, there's like, in these games. Yeah, there's notes and then there's like voicemails but that's it. Notes and diary and Did you get entries. to the part where you find the record player in the living room? And you yeah. can like listen to like the old 50s songs? So on that table, there is a flyer to go and be a fire tower watcher in the fire watch world. Because these are the same developers. Right, they, do, they, really did cool. look, they did look similar. Yeah, so it's pretty funny that you kind of went to this one next. Right, but... And so these guys do a good job, and they obviously sort of... Firewatch being the game that came out first, and then they moved on to Gone Home. Mm -hmm. They uh, they did a good job of really leaning more into the horror elements that I think really worked in their first installment, right. Firewatch, and now Gone well, Home. They lean if into you it. if you really want to talk about, may in my opinion, maybe the best horror walking simulator that was ever made. Even though, again, I'm going to say that I am no expert at walking horror simulators because I don't play a lot of them, but you have to talk about PT because that one was like everything P from T? P, P period T period. Um, okay. Made by, I want to say Hideo Kojima. It, I it is. Yeah. 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 So it's like a, it's tied into the silent Hill universe, I think. And oh, the entire okay. game takes place in one hallway. Oh, like, this guy did Death Stranding. This guy yeah. and Metal Gear Solid. So yes. this is, I've, yes. heard, I've heard a lot about Kojima. Apparently he's yes. like a big deal. He is a very big deal. This game, PT, it was a demo you could download on PlayStation. It's not up anymore. You can't get it anymore. Um, it takes place in one hallway, like one L-shaped hallway. Um, and you literally just loop this hallway over and over and over again. And the whole time there's like <laughs> this one ghost lady that's like around and like chasing you and doing things. But you also like some sometimes when you go through the hallway, you go into the bathroom and you see this like dead baby in the sink. And sometimes you go around and you see like a ghost like. Okay, can I thing. ask you a quick question? Yeah. Would it be this hallway? Yes, that's the hallway. And okay. you can see in that little picture that says PT hack confirms we're always being followed. That's the, the ghost in the game. I don't remember gotcha. what her name is, but uh, but that whole con PT hack confirms whatever they're saying. That is like when th when this demo dropped, people lost their minds. It was fucking crazy. And when was this? Like the two thousands or something? No, it was like four was better years ago, hallway, maybe five years ago. Audio version available on YouTube.com slash so talking with Andrew and Chris. Um, yeah, you walk down that hallway and you turn right, and then it's essentially like the front door entrance way of the house, and then there's a door that leads to like the basement. But then when you open that door, it just leads to the this spot in the hallway again. Um, and in this game, literally anytime you don't see the ghost lady, she's directly behind you, like behind your player character at all times. Like okay. you just hear her breathing and making twitching sounds, and then like you turn around and she's not there because she's still behind you, and it's just. And Love it's an that. insane story that you have to play through a bunch of times to really understand because, like, all the story beats are so, like, subtle and vague. And then you get to the very end and it's, like, uh, they give you a cutscene for a game that they're... I don't even know if they're still making this game because I'm pretty sure that this entire demo is just, like, a... Essentially an interactive intro sequence to tease 
the new Silent Hill game starring Norman Reedus. But then I think they stopped making that game because of a bunch of reasons, and then they took that game and just made Death Stranding instead. So now PT is just this weird, obscure, terrifying hallway game <laughs> that you can like never play again, and it's the craziest thing to watch. I watched it I'll on have YouTube, to look and up, uh, I watched yeah, a bunch of breakdowns. Yeah, I'll have to look up a gameplay video of that or something. It's crazy, and it's so scary looking. Like gotcha. I didn't even, yeah, you know, I couldn't even play it, and I was spooked by it. <laughs> That is when walking simulators kind of came around, like in 2014, uh, 2012-ish. Uh, there was like that game Amnesia, The Dark Descent, which was like they right. consider it the first walking simulator. <clears throat> Actually, the, the the Dark Descent is the newest one. I don't know the name of the original. I haven't really delved I think into it's that just series amnesia. too much. It might just be Amnesia. I feel like they've always had a colon and then something. I'm not sure. I haven't got into that series too much. So, so that was like the first credited walking simulator. And then so PT is in that 2014 range. There's another game in that 2014 range, which, you know, a little I did a little allusion to it at the beginning of this podcast, which would be, uh, whoops, not that one. I was going to oh, say, man. I was like, I don't think that one was a walking simulator. Oh, this hey. one is. Sorry. Whoops, I had the wrong thing on my screen. This, this 100% is a walking simulator. Alien yes. Isolation is an incredible game. It's... I, I only played it this past uh, quarantine, actually. Um, it is, you play as Ripley's daughter, and you are sent to, oh, sorry, Ripley's mother. And you are actually, it's pre-dating Alien, but apparently it's canon. You have to go out there and visit this uh, sort of like space colony of scientists that are far from Earth who had this uh, spaceship come from uh, the forest reaching the galaxy, and obviously on it, it had a unknown pathogen that got into the spaceship known as the alien. And so once you arrive, the, the spaceship is in shambles. You get there and you crash into it quite literally because the gravitational orbit uh, that it has is all thrown off from the weight being messed up, from the alien just ravaging it and stuff. And from there, it's just fight to survive and kill the alien because you're not going to make it out alive. And you learn all this in the beginning. Like... This is a suicide mission, quite literally. Kill the alien, save humanity. And it's so intense, dude. Like, you're hiding in lockers. You are, you know, hiding in cabinets. The only thing you can really do is fend off the alien with, like, a flamethrower or with, like, a, a floodlight or with a pistol. Right. But you, but you, you can't can never just, like, kill, kill it. it. Yeah. Nope. You can never kill it. And it's so intense. It actually, narratively, is one of the stronger of these types of games. It, it has, like, a story that you play through that is a little more concise and to the point because a lot of these games are like very interpretive i think again that's like the budgetary restraints of just the horror genre in general and also mm -hmm. part of the scare factor but obviously this being produced by sega uh you know um i forget the actual company but like the uh the, the main publisher was sega so it had money thrown at it and it was the cool thing about this is it was a skunks works project mm -hmm. because sega had asked three uh, game developers to create an alien title and you can find all this in the no clip documentary on it actually they just put it out this past week it was really interesting mm -hmm. sega asked um, it was published by sega developed by creative assembly and feral interactive Right, CA. CA would be the company, Creative Assembly. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they, Sega was like, hey guys, like we, we have the Alien IP. We've you know leased it for three games, and we want you guys to do one of them. What can you come up with? They brought them this. By the time they had gotten their pitch off the ground and their little demo of this off the ground, Sega said, this is great, but the first two Alien games we already put out have tanked. We have moved on. We're just going to hang on to this and maybe come back to it for the last title in a few years, but we don't plan on releasing a third in this series. Can you make us like a Wii Sports Olympic competitor type game? And so they were like, damn, this is really good. And the lower creative reps at Sega were like, this is really good. I would hate to see this go somewhere. So they kind of like formed a corporate coup where they would show Sega this Olympics game and there'd be like no progress on it and then in that final meeting when they knew they were going to get fired or, or lose the um, the job from Sega they were like but wait we have this incredible demo unlike anything you've ever seen in the, in the 11th hour they switched it from third person to first person which I think was huge for because this game why I bring it up and why I went back and played it so many years later because the graphics definitely are while they're solid they're old now uh, you know mm -hmm. this game was kind of like oh, so this is the format of a walking simulator. This is what that is. Like, it helped set that in stone. Right. 
and I think it did a lot, quite honestly, for the indie gaming world, mm-hmm. having this big IP attached to it, but still having this like indie game feel. So it's got a really cool story, both in its production and in its gameplay, and uh, it's ten out of ten. It might be one of my favorite games of all time. Like if we did a list on this show of of ten favorite like single player story games of all time, mm-hmm. this would probably be like nine or eight. It's really good. Damn. I, I would highly recommend it. Well, that's why it still fetches the twenty five dollars that it cost when it came out to to this day. It's like one of those Witcher type things where we'll put it on sale, but it's still selling copies right. at its original retail value. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. I mean, I think the first game, the fir- I think the first horror game that I got into like that that I thought also had a really good story was Bioshock. Mm. That one spooked me, and that one I thought had a really cool story. Kind of back and, to that Dead Spacey style <clears throat> of gameplay. Right, exactly. Like, I don't even know why I played Bioshock, honestly. Like, I feel like looking back at it, it was not a game that would have interested me. It had to have been like a friend of mine was like, yo, this game looks sick. And I was like, oh, it looks kind of cool. Yeah, I'll check it out. And maybe I didn't know it was supposed to be scary or something because I don't know why I would have bought a scary game at that time in my life. <laughs> yeah, but, we were kind of young when that game came out. And I think I had yeah. similar feelings where I was... The commercials mm-hmm. were scary, but I thought it couldn't be that scary. Like, little exactly. girl on top of giant scary man, that got me when I was a little kid. Like, mm-hmm. still can't really finish The Shining right. at nighttime. It was, you know? Honestly, it was probably that I saw that it was like, you have guns, but then you also like could throw fire and lightning and stuff. And I was like, oh, cool, superpowers. Um, but then, like, you start the game, and you're on a plane, and you're just like, oh, well just on this plane and then the plane crashes and then you're just the first time you can move your character you're just swimming in the ocean you're like huh (laughs) like what and then you just see a freaking building sticking out of the ocean you're like well i know what this game's about so i think i gotta go to the building in the middle of the ocean and then you find this city that they built underground and you're like oh this is so cool the city and then you get inside and you're like but where are all the people and then all of the people are like strung out druggies trying to beat your head in with a wrench because they need some crazy drug you've never heard of that you're going to start collecting from these little zombie girls that are being protected by these scuba diving looking guys with drills for hands and then like and 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 all of that honestly is scary enough but then they went a step further and like the set like all of the levels look amazing they all are scary and then like I'm going to spoil one of the I'm going to spoil a scene in this game just because of how much i remember it like this is the kind of game where like when they give you when they give you weapons they want you to be like it's a big deal that you're getting this new weapon like we're giving it to you in a cool way like the first gun you find is a revolver and you find it in a baby carriage after they teach you to sneak up behind this enemy who's like talking what you think she's talking to her baby in the carriage and you beat her with the wrench like to kill her while you're sneaking so that they teach you how to do that. and then you look in the stroller and there's just a revolver in it and you're like oh this crazy woman was like talking to a gun like it was a baby. But what I'm trying to get to is that you walk into this room and there's it's a fully lit room and there's a shotgun. I don't remember if it's like with a dead body or if it's on a table or what. You find the shotgun and you're like, oh, hell yeah, dude. Love shotguns in video games. You pick it up. All the lights turn off and you're like, that's not a good sign. Then one light turns on in the middle of the room where you're standing and you're like, Okay, and then all of a sudden, from just every corner of the room, enemy comes out one at a time. They just come running out of darkness, like, Aah! and you're like, what the fuck? And you're boom, 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 and I'm like, thank God right. I have the freaking shotgun now. And then you kill like probably 15 enemies, and the lights come back on, and you're like, what the fuck just happened, dude? I'm like 13, dude. and I just remember like so many times in that game, just walking around corners so slowly because I'm like, I am so fucking scared. Because they like on, the only time there's music is when you're already in the middle of a fight. Other than that, it's just silence. You hear drips. You hear like weird machines doing things, and then you just hear like, ah! and you turn around and there's some crazed heroin addict running at you with a pipe, and you're like, ah! yeah, that game had some seriously intense subject matter and some yeah kind of interesting social commentary if you really think dude about and then it. and then the cool twist at the end that i'm not gonna spoil like <sighs> it's so good it don't don't spoil it i'm not it's so good bioshock it's 2 like I... was not scary at all and i didn't really like it but then bioshock 3 i wouldn't say it was scary like this one was because there wasn't like darkness and all spooky or whatever but at the same time i felt like that one as much as it wasn't scary it still like had you in suspense because you're like there's a bad guy and i'm trying to save this woman who they're trying to get and like 
all the enemies still felt like they were like strung out and trying to like rip you apart. It was definitely right. still kind of creepy, but nothing like no, the first yeah, Bioshock. I, um, I never beat a Bioshock game just because they always got a little too intense for me. I don't think I played the uh, the third one, Infinite. I played the first, mm. and I remember the second not being when that I got, great. So when I, I got to the end, away from it. when I got to the end of Infinite, the twist blew my brain so far out of my skull that I literally dropped my controller <laughs> on the ground. I was sitting Damn. in my room playing it, sitting in front of the TV. I like beat whatever's the end of the game. You're watching the end cutscenes and shit when they're like teaching you shit, and then it's like, here's the twist, and I was like. I just dropped my controller. I like I froze. I was like, "What?" And you've kind of you've replayed these games quite a bit, right? Yeah, I have the remastered collection, and I played through the first. I've played through the first one, and I played through Infinite again because I tried to play through the second one, and I was like, "I really don't like this game." Mm -hmm. Gotcha. But I know the first one and Infinite really well. Yeah. No. uh, Two things I have to add to that. One, I want to apologize to Paul Jemai for all your your potty mouth here. Uh, I know he raised you better, and it's a little, you know, upsetting that you have to curse to get a point across. And uh, so, sorry, wow. Dad. And two, Why I want to say that. Why are you sucking up to my dad? <laughs> hey, man. You know, I feel like it's not, it's not cool, man. You know, he, he doesn't like that type of thing. And and you know what, Andrew? You can do better than that. And so, this speaking of doing better than that, it's funny you brought up Bioshock, because the next game I was going to bring up is a game called Closer to the Sun. Now, the reason this game is on the list is because preemptively knowing Andrew so well, I knew Bioshock would come up. And so Whoa, I played this okay. game okay. because <laughs> this game is created by people who love Bioshock. It's basically a walking simulator and an homage to uh, Bioshock. And they say that very clearly when they do interviews and whatnot. This game is about if Nikola Tesla had the ability to uh, hire all of the creative people in the world at the time, the top scientists, the top engineers, and put them on a mega boat out in the ocean to work on his crazy experiments where they were safely away from society so that they wouldn't harm anyone, but they could make all the progress that he wanted to make. And so throughout it, I don't know how much you guys know about Nikola Tesla. Go look him up. He has a lot of grand ideas that sadly most of them never came to fruition. And I don't know if many of them could, but he certainly dreamed up a lot of intense, deep sci-fi style but there's a, re- there's a reason why he's still being talked about and used <clears throat> like this because he was pretty crazy smart. Yeah, so of course all hell breaks loose and they open a portal yeah. to all a not these good pictures place. Look pretty crazy. And uh, you know you got to escape. It's a walking sim. A lot of walking simulators you have to escape. The premise is cool. The execution was poor. But if you guys like Bioshock, you might get something out of it. So I would at least say go and check that one out and. Uh, was glad, glad I was able to sneak that one in there, you know. Well, that's and good. so, listen, hold on. I think we're, you know, we're getting, uh, we're already in the second half of the episode. We're rounding the corner, if you will. I think we'd be remiss if we didn't. I don't know if I even use that word right, but I'm just gonna power through it. I think that we need to bring up zombie games, like. Like I mentioned Last of Us before, but like Last of Us, uh, Left 4 Dead, Resident Evil, Silent Hill, you know, like that's a whole genre of game that has a whole bunch of different executions. Like Silent Hill is way different than Resident Evil, which is way different than Left 4 Dead, which is way different than Last of Us. And it's so crazy that you can take something that's just like zombies are a problem in the world and you have to deal with it. And they've made so many different ways of doing that. Sure. Yeah. So let's start here, uh, Andrew. I um, I never really played this game because, mm-hmm. well, I borrowed your. <laughs> you, you very graciously lent me or, or loaned me your uh, your PlayStation Three back in the day with Last of mm-hmm. Us for the sole purpose of playing Last of Us, but I could just never bring myself to play it so it was at my house for like nine months and i never played it but it's true i really regret that but you play this game quite a bit and and you're currently i played working your way i played the, the second, first right? one yeah i played the first one on ps3 and then i got the remastered version on ps4 i played through that dlc thing and then yeah now i'm probably <clears throat> i mean i don't know exactly how far i am i think i'm about halfway i'm like 14 to 15 hours in or something. Mm-hmm. I think I just finished Seattle Day 2, for those who have played. 
I just left the hospital. If that, if people who are listening know, you know, have finished the game, I just left the hospital in Seattle. I don't. That's it. Um, so, well, first I'll talk about the first one because I know that one a lot. Um, first of all, this game, like, what I really like about this game is that they did something that, like, a lot of games... They all like they give you a lot of choices in this game, but not the same way that games that advertise choices do. Like all these games, like uh, like Dishonored or Fable or even like Fallout and Skyrim and stuff. Like you can kind of do whatever you mm-hmm. want. So it's like you can choose to like be a good guy, you could be a bad guy, blah blah blah, whatever. This game, which you know, like will change the story and maybe somebody, some NPC doesn't like you down the road because you were a bad guy, blah blah blah, whatever. But this game does it in a different way where like the story and the levels are all the same like you have to go through the same level you go you see the same cutscenes. everybody interacts with everybody the exact same way but they give you you can choose which way you play through this story like you can go in guns a blazing and just be like i'm shooting everything in the face and i'm running through the levels quickly that's what i like to do i am good at that i have good aim or if you're like me and you don't have that great of aim when you're using a controller in The Last of Us, you can sneak around and just stealth kill everything, which I thought was really cool because it was like, here's the story, but you could play it however you want. Like, the story, we wrote the story and the story's too good for you to, mi- to, <laughs> to fuck up, which is true. The story is so good. And when I, listen... I'm not going to get into a lot of the story because I don't want to spoil anything and I could probably just ramble about the story for a long time, but... I will tell you how good the story is by telling you this story. I brought The Last of Us to my buddy PJ's house to show it to him because he had never played it. He played through the intro, which, you know, for those who haven't played the first Last of Us, the intro sequence of this game is you start as the character Joel. He's in his house with his daughter, Sarah. Um, They're hanging out at home. And then, like, Sarah falls asleep on the couch. And then you play as her first. And you're walking around the house being like, oh, I just heard some weird noise. And my dad is gone. And then, like, you're looking around and you see the news. It's like, oh, shit's so scary. And people are sick. And you're like, oh, that's weird. And then Joel shows up. And then you have to, like, run away from all these zombies. And then at the end of this beginning part, like, your daughter dies. And it's so sad. And, like, we get through this whole thing. You know, the zombies are showing up. And it's, like, a, you know, prequel for the rest of the game just to show you when it affected the main character. And then, like, it's a really emotional beginning thing, you know, like, his daughter dies in his arms and everything. And then I, like, turn to PJ when the credits start rolling to, like, get to the actual game. I'm like, dude, pretty sick, right? And I look at him, and he's crying. And this, and my buddy PJ is, like, he's from the streets. Like, he's tough. One time when I was at his place, he was on the phone, and he's like, yo, some dude that my homie sold drugs to says that the drugs were bad, so he's coming back, so we're all going to fight him. And I was like, cool, that means I'm leaving. So I went home that day. But this day was a different day. And so when I tell you that he was crying from seeing the beginning of this game... <laughs> I this dude getting out of there quicker than grease lightning. Yes. And so the fact that this dude was crying from the beginning of this game, he's like, bro, I can't, I can't keep playing this game right now. You got to turn it off. Like, uh, It's so sad. I was like, dude... Like, this game grips you. Like, I don't know if you've ever read Mm -hmm. The Road by Cormac McCarthy, but that's one of those things where it's like, sad, 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 sad. Maybe it's good. Nope, it's sad. And that's kind of like what this game is like. It's like, the world is so shitty. And their lives are so shitty. And then you're like, oh, but this moment's kind of nice. And then they're like, but remember, they live shitty lives. And then it's just like, it takes you for a ride. And then even if the story was kind of whatever, like the game is just so fun and so rewarding and like it looks so good and the zombies are cool and the story is great. And now I'm playing through the second one and it's like the same game in the best way. Like the the controls are all the same. You play as Ellie, which I always liked playing as Ellie more than playing as Joel. I don't know if that's a hot take or not, but Switchblade is way better than making shivs, IMO. Uh, and I just, the, the story is so good. And with this second one too, because of how much better the graphics are and everything, it's, it's not like a walking simulator is like playing through a movie, but this looks and feels like a movie. Like everywhere, every time you're just playing through the game, people are talking to each other. Their facial expressions are always changing. I was standing on top of a building and killed some human being that was trying to kill me and I kill her. And then her, like the other enemy goes, Kim! And I was like, oh my god, they all have names. Like, they're all humans. It's so insane and so in-depth and it's so fun. And there's all new zombies and zombies are always popping up everywhere and it's so scary and so emotional and it's just... The Last of Us is my favorite zombie game. 
Yeah, I had to give you the solo box there because, <laughs> God damn it, you were on one in the best way possible. I yeah, I guess that's why it. they're making an HBO show about it. Yeah, I mean, which I'm HBO very excited video games and also money. scared about, like, just like yeah. I'm scared for the Avatar live action thing, which we're not going to talk about. But I'm oh, that got canceled, it. by the way. Oh, it's just canceled. Done. Donezo. Honestly, I'm relieved. <laughs> really? As soon as I was really as looking soon, forward to it. As soon as both of the creators of Avatar were like, "Yeah, Netflix said they were going to let us." have creative control and then they kind of like didn't do any of the stuff they said they would so we're not working on that thing anymore i was like well mm -hmm. that means that netflix literally don't know what the fuck they're doing and they're gonna ruin everyone's favorite uh american anime cartoons so yep. i'm glad that it's just canceled yeah, but i totally. think the last of us is gonna be a lot l there's a lot less room to make that bad as long as they don't just try to do like a carbon copy of the walking dead well hbo is pretty uh pretty on point with their adaptations i would say i mean mm -hmm. but Game of so Thrones, you didn't play the last of us but you materials. definitely played left for dead right yeah man i uh i really liked left for dead especially the second one i thought was just exceptional mm -hmm. like such a especially now that if you buy sequel. if you buy the second one you have both games so it's amazing and i don't know if you played it yet i haven't really played it yet but they just dropped a huge update for left for dead that was literally a new whole campaign like you know how you had like the four campaigns in each game a whole new campaign made completely by fans. Wow, really? Yes, fan-made okay. campaign. They officially added it to the game. It's a free update. And it's freaking crazy. So you ever heard of that game, Dying Light? The zombie yes. game? Left 4 yes. Dead and Dying Light just did a collaboration as well. So really? Left 4 Dead's... Yeah, there's like a skin right, pack or something. Now that make you, it, now that you like mentioned... Now that you mentioned Dying Light, we have to just we don't. I'm not going to talk about it, but we have to mention Dead oh, Rising, another popular zombie game. Dying I know, Light I just is figured, phenomenal. Uh, I just I, think I Dead Rising was like the last one we didn't mention. <laughs> Unfortunately, <laughs> there was like a terrible person I used to play that game with, uh, mm -hmm. so I don't want to talk about it. But uh, it happens. Great game. And yeah, so yeah, you can mention fun. Dead Rising. You can mention Di um, you know, uh, Silent Hill or whatever. I don't know what we're talking about even anymore. Those games. But, like, <laughs> this is, in my opinion, the greatest zombie video game of all time. Not specifically okay. the final season. It was just the highest, most, uh, the lowest amount of pixel picture I could find for some reason. <laughs> the the Google images are not kind to the Telltale Dude, Walking you gotta Dead you got to go to the top and hit um, large image. Listen. Well, that's okay. That I mean... Day. I haven't Did played The play Walking these? Dead. No, I played Telltale games oh. like the Batman ones and the Dude. Guardians of the Galaxy one, and those two were phenomenal. So I have to imagine that this is really good. And you I've want to only speak heard about good things about this. Shedding a tear or two or seventy. This game really does that to you, man. It's when the writing is good. It doesn't matter if the graphics kind of annoy you or if the gameplay is a little clunky because this was like their flagship first ever. Release yeah. so it's a little, it was no, a little rough in the first that. season. It was a little rough in the first season, but it doesn't matter. It was a huge smash hit. This company apparently, or unfortunately, made some terrible business decisions, and so they went under. And now they're restarting up again, but there's barely any of the original creators and developers and, and writers behind it. So we'll see how much of the old soul is actually still there. I feel like it's going to be another now this nerdist situation where it's just going to tank. That but, was so uh, stupid. That was terrible. That was awful. That was but uh, terrible. You know, um, sorry, not Nerdist. What am I saying? Um, right, source-fed nerd. Sur source-fed nerd. Source-fed and source-fed nerd. Thank and you. And then now this. Nerdist yes. is in its own terrible place right now, right. and that's all on them. <laughs> Doesn't Nerdist suck right now? I can't watch it anymore. I, I used I to love think it, I've man. Watched, I don't think I've watched a Nerdist video uh, probably since 2019. Once they lost Chobot. I was like, I'm done. Once Chobot was gone, and then, like, I know that it turned out that it was all lies, but, like, the Chris Hardwick situation, when that w happened, I was just like, this whole thing is just sketchy. And since then, you know, everything is is good with Chris Hardwick. You know, that was all straightened out, and he's fine. But before it was all straightened out, and everything was sketchy looking, I was like, uh, this is just, I don't... Dan Casey's great, but Dan Casey's not enough to carry Nerdist That's on what I was just going to say, himself. dude. It's like... And I liked Allison. With... I liked Allison Hayslip, too, but... Yeah, but then they let her go. And, yeah, and uh, yeah. they they went with Dan, and I'm like, damn, dude, I liked Dan for like the Friday segment, 
Like, yeah, I like his list of segment. stuff. Yeah, let him work on something all week, but he can't. I don't know. So I don't want to. Whatever. It's unfortunate. They're just they're, they're too corporate though. Like they got too corporate YouTube. But mm-hmm. you know, it I feel like that kind of happened with The Walking Dead because the final season unfortunately was not as good as the first couple. Mm. But still great games. I rec- I highly recommend the first season. Blew my blew absolutely blew my mind, and uh, I think that there's something in it for everyone. Other than that, I had a few honorable mentions. If uh, if if you care to indulge me real quick, indulge, Chris. I this game I needs all the attention that it's never gotten. Canarium. It's based on H.P. Lovecraft and mm. his uh, novel At the Mountains of Madness. Essentially, you're sent to an archaeological research center in Antarctica, and guys, Lovecraft always is the storyline of you crack that wrong piece of ice and you unleash an ancient alien demon that's been buried for a hundred million years. And that is a hundred percent true in the case here. And this game is visually stunning. It is such a good story. The, the gameplay, the writing for a walking simulator, it's like the most immersed I've felt in one in a long time and really never went anywhere. Very unfortunate. It had like hmm. a little hit while it was. Go- it had like a little bubble for a second on Steam, and then they put it on sale six months later, and had a little bit more. But like, not even the big streamers I watch picked it up. It was, it's very overlooked, underrated game. I love it. Just outside of my top three hundred games of all time, I highly recommend all of you guys go and check it out. And then, honestly, you know, horror games have really, and horror in general, has replaced a lot of my uh, my former taste. So it's like tough for me to do this, but. There is a game series, man, that, I, again, I only discovered thanks to the quarantine. They're coming out with the most recent installment at the end of the year. It's going to be sort of like a Soviet Union infiltration um, and all this crazy stuff breaks out around, uh, you know, experimenting on people and turning them into weird things. I don't want to give too much away of the heart of the game right now, so I guess I will just reveal the game that I am talking about, guys. Outlast? I don't know what uh, Bundle of Terror is. Uh, that I'm assuming is it's probably like the me. first and second one put together. Yeah, yeah it looks like it, because like you have the yeah. guy from the first on the left and, and the guy from the second on the right. Outlast was a game that I never played, but shout out Tyler Wilson. When I went to his house, his brother Parker was playing it. And he explained to me, like, what the deal was, that you're, like, this reporter, and the only way you can, like, see in the dark is with your camera, but your camera has a certain amount of battery. I'm like, nope. Not, nope. I'm not doing that. It's really cool. I'm not it's a really putting cool myself through that I, stress. I think this game gets a bad rap because it's always given out for free all the time, but... You got to understand, this game was such a big hit that the games that are given out for free are the games that can afford to give their games out for free for like a week span or a month span on, on a console because they've made back the money they put into this game. Right. And and this game proves why it was such a big hit. And uh, it also came out in 2013, I think helps push the walking simulator genre a little bit further. And I think the second one in 2017 really cemented it. And hopefully the new one's good because it is an out of left field premise for these types of games <laughs> who, who kind of took the traditional haunted hospital, haunted house thing and, and ran with it. And put their mm-hmm. own twist mm-hmm. on it, so we'll see. But I'm excited mm-hmm. for it, man. And uh, this cool. was a good, this was a good conversation. Do you have any honorable Sweet. mentions or? Uh, yeah, I guess so. Um, I just remembered. You don't have that... to have any. No, I do. It's a good one. Um, so like I've been saying, I never really played scary games because I didn't really like being scared. But I do remember one a game that I loved still to this day, but now has been completely just eclipsed by Skyrim. There's no reason to play the other one anymore. Oblivion. Um, Oblivion, Elder Scrolls 4, Oblivion, always really fun. Love that game. It's what made me love Skyrim so much, because Skyrim was literally just, like, everything great about Oblivion, and then they took out all the really annoying things about Oblivion, like athletics and acrobatics and that kind of crap. Um, anyway, in Oblivion, because it was essentially, like, Skyrim before they took out all the annoying things that made Oblivion really annoying one of which was how dark caves were if you didn't have a torch now when I was playing Oblivion I was a younger lad you know I was probably like I don't know 11 12 13 something like that playing Oblivion and I um as a young kid I was kind of a bitch you know I was scared I didn't like confrontation I you know 
I wasn't very tough. I'll admit that. And I was playing Oblivion, and every time I'd go into a cave, I just I would have one torch, and the torch would go out, and it'd be so dark, and there'd be no music, and it would be so scary. I'd be so nervous. Look at like look how dark that is. That's so dark. And over in the dark part yeah, over over here. Like, that's where, like, the enemy is walking around, or that's where you need to go, that's where the door is, and you have no idea where anything is. I would get so scared You can, like, barely this game. see it right now. I would get so scared, play- and that's a dead body right there on the ground, so you're, you don't even know what's going on. Um, I would get so nervous that I would, like, hit up my Xbox menu, and I would play one All-American Rejects song on repeat because it was the only one that put me in like a happy mood and it was change your mind which i don't know if you've ever listened to that song but it starts with this really funny synth sound that just goes do 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 and it's like oh okay i thought you were going to say it, it just, ends tonight because of that lyric when darkness turns to light no, no that's really funny though i wasn't that deep no it just like it was a song that just because of how funny that opening synth sound is it was just it just like cut the tension immediately and i was like Okay, I'm just playing a stupid game that's too dark. That's it. That's all that's going on now. And it, and I had it was one song. The song ended. It just started over. It just played on repeat. I played the one song over and over again until I left the cave. And that was always how it was. And I just remembered that. So that's my honorable mention. Horror games are caves in Oblivion. Oblivion and the Elder Scroll franchise are just immortalized in my uh, upbringing and i always got arrested because i would just steal shit and not know how to not do it when i was little it was Dude, frustrating I, but i have bought skyrim probably five times that's how much yeah I like you this have game. that is another podcast for another day and i think that's a good point to wrap this up guys thank you for joining us on the second but the first official episode of no npcs now my first actually co-hosted by andrew of talking with andrew and chris so andrew why don't you let all of the talking tv and I suppose talking with Andrew and Chris listeners, although they come out in droves and already know the deal, but let, let, let everyone here who might be stumbling upon this because, hey, the YouTube algorithm overlords sometimes do shine favor on the lesser of the population of YouTube. So why don't you let them know where they can find us, what we do here on YouTube, and how to stay in touch with us. Okay, Chris. Well, if you don't know, uh, well, if you're watching this on YouTube, first of all, thank you because we appreciate you watching it. Uh, If you're watching it and you want to know where you can listen to it, if sometimes you need to give your eyes a break or you need to go for a walk or something, you don't want to stare at your phone, totally reasonable. Uh, We're on all of the digital streaming platforms, you know, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Radio Public, all the other ones that I never remember since it took me like over a year to remember Stitcher and Radio Public. Um, We're on all of those. Uh, If you can, you know, subscribe, follow us. Uh, if, if they allow you on the service, leave a rating because we love being rated. That's why, you know, we put ourselves out on the internet because we seek validation. So please validate us. We would love that. Um, if you're listening and you're like, you know what? They were talking about a lot of things that were probably on screen that I didn't get to see because I'm only listening. (coughs) And you know what? We appreciate you listening, but it is a little bit more fun when you're in on the joke, isn't it? If you want to be in on the (laughs) jokes and see our visual bits then get over to YouTube. We're talking with Andrew and Chris. Talking TV. We're all we're both on there. Subscribe to both. I'm sure that at the bottom it'll say something like featured channels or subscribe to or likes. Yeah. I really I have faith in you guys. It's not going to be that hard to find it. You can find it. Subscribe. Like every video that's on there because it really helps us out like so much and it's literally a click like you just have to click and then you're done and then it helps us out so much and we'd really appreciate it. And click that Um, bell to turn on notifications as well. Dude, don't just click the bell. Punch the bell. Punch it. That's what all the YouTubers say. You have to punch it. I think clicking it doesn't work. You have to punch it. Yeah, punch that bell to turn on notifications. Follow us. Also, were you about to say follow us on social medias? No, no, no. You were about to say that. I was about to cut you off. (laughs) <laughs> You're right. Uh, follow us on social medias at Talking Podcast. At is it just Talking TV or is it Talking TV Podcast? Talking TV Podcast. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> at Talking Podcast. At Talking TV Podcast on all of the regular social medias. Follow us. Chat with us. Like us. Email us. Call my phone if you have my phone number. Yeah. FaceTime me if you know where I live. Show up. Let's talk. Let's hang out. Once Guys, it's basically. Safe. 
it's really easy. The links to each channel will be in the description, so you can find the other one through there, depending on which one you chose to listen to this with. Each channel will post, or does post, every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, with new episodes coming out on each of those days, hence why we post on those days. On Instagram, each channel is active daily. Again, the links to all those things will be in the description. This is going to be a monthly segment. Next month, we're going to be doing our favorite Star Wars video games, as we'll be in the middle of our Mandalorian recap month extravaganza airing every friday night at 7 30 we're going to be doing our recap series so of course andrew and i have to hit that at the halfway point with some good old star wars video game talks and uh you know all that can really be said is if you're here you're not an npc and let's keep it that way it's about True. time we take back what's ours right <laughs> amen brother stay sweet stay sweet stay sweet